So the government yesterday made some announcements uh, regarding uh, its thinking about the possible path of minimum wages uh, after 2020. So in this uh, short presentation, I'm just going to set out what we've learned and, and what the implications of the government's uh, statements might be. So it's good to remind us uh, where we are. 20 years ago, uh, the Labour government introduced the national minimum wage, and when it was done so, it was a, a, a level that was about 45% of uh, average earnings, of median earnings. Okay? And over the kind of 15 years after that, the national minimum wage rose more quickly than average earnings, so this, went, this line goes up. And so when we hit 2015, we're at a level of uh, the national minimum wage being about £6.50 per hour. Then uh, Mr Osborne comes along in 2015 and introduces the uh, national living wage in which he says that by 2020 we're going to get to 60% of median earnings on this uh, graph. And so far we've got to about here, £7.83 per hour. And uh, to meet that target of 60%, we're talking about about £8.60 uh, an hour minimum wage in 2020. Okay. So, what, back at the last budget, the government said that it has an aspiration to end low pay. Uh, and th the way it defines that is uh, as le low pay being uh, someone paid less than two-thirds of uh, median income. So that would be 66.66666% on this uh, graph, which I can put in uh, here. And uh, two-thirds of, uh, uh, of median earnings would be around £9.50 an hour, uh, at least in 2020. So a bit of context there. We're talking a little bit below, but in a similar ballpark, to the minimum wage proposed by the Labour Party in its 2017 general election manifesto, which was, was £10 an hour. Um, now, there are very large proportions of people that are affected by these levels of minimum wage, both in 2020 and if the government were to go uh, on towards something like two-thirds of median uh, earnings. So, in 2020... The OBR thinks that about one in six employees would be directly affected uh, by that kind of level of minimum wage. But there are a lot of people who earn uh, just above that. And so if you were to go forward to, if you were to go forward to about uh, two-thirds of median uh, earnings, then that would be talking about one in four uh, employees. Of course, that's going to be more in poorer areas of the country, more for part-time <coughs> workers, more uh, women who are uh, lower paid on average than men. Okay, so given this context, what was actually announced yesterday? Well, the government said that, it, that in the coming budget in the autumn, it's going to announce the remit for the Low Pay Commission after 2020, the Low Pay Commission being the uh, government body that... Uh, helps the government uh, set the uh, minimum wages in this country. And to help decide what its remit is going to be, it announced that it will ask uh, Professor Aaron Rajat Duby from the University of Massachusetts, and who is a renowned scholar in this area, to undertake a review of the effects of uh, minimum wages on, on employment and productivity with a view to coming to a, some form of uh, agreement on what the... Uh, remit for the, for the future minimum wage policy uh, should be. Okay, so, so given you know, the, the, this review is going to un uh, be undertaken, what do we already know about uh, minimum wages? Well, the key thing that we know is that minimum wages uh, boost the wages of low earners. So this is actually the same... Uh, same data as uh, Carl showed earlier when looking at earnings. And what this shows is the real hourly wage growth of low earners on the left and the highest, to, all the way to highest earners on the right, since April 2015. So since just before the, uh, since before the national living wage was introduced. And what you can see as a result of that increase in the minimum wage, that you see big increases in growth of low earners relative uh, to middle earners. 
So that's the big boost of a minimum wage. Now, there are some caveats around this. As we've said before in, in uh, forums like this, those people on the lowest hourly wages that you see with that big growth in wages down the bottom there are not necessarily poor. Actually, a lot of them have middle incomes or even high incomes because for a multitude of reasons, including having partners who have significantly higher pay than them. So it's not particularly targeted at the poor. That's one caveat of this. The second caveat is that these higher earnings for low-paid people have to come from somewhere. Okay? They have to come from a potentially a combination of higher consumer prices, lower profits uh, for firms, or lower earnings for uh, the, basically everybody else. That's unless there are big productivity increases as a result of this policy, and that's actually something the OBR doesn't uh, assume. Okay. So if, so if the key benefit, subject to those caveats, if the key kind of benefit is higher wages for low earners, what are the risks of a higher minimum wage? Well, that's well known, really. The one that's most focused upon is the idea that a higher minimum wage prices people out of the labour market and reduces employment, increases unemployment. So a lot of the academic research that has looked at this in the past hasn't found you know, much evidence of lower uh, employment as a result of minimum wage increases. Now, contrary to some people's beliefs, that's not, uh, th this is actually doesn't go against the laws of economics in, in some way. This is consistent with a story in which employers have a degree of market power. What does that mean? That means that when, em by employing somebody, firms make some profit uh, in that relationship, and it means that when a higher minimum wage goes up, that profit goes down a little bit, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop them actually employing uh, the worker. Now, irrespective of this, this doesn't mean that you can con continue to push up uh, minimum wages indefinitely and not have any impact on employment. At some point, the fact that a higher minimum wage incentivizes firms to use less labour is going to really bite and cause unemployment. But we don't really know where that point is. So given we don't know that where that point is at the moment, it is good that the government has asked for a review to, under, to look at the international evidence on the impact of minimum wages. But it might be difficult to come up with a definitive answer here for the government. And that's because of the level of minimum wages that we're already at and particularly if the government were to push forward towards a kind of aspiration of two-thirds of medium pay. So let me show you that here. This is an international comparison of levels of minimum wages from the OECD. So I'm looking at industrialised countries that have minimum wages. A lot of industrialised countries don't have any minimum wages. Okay? And you can see in 2017, the UK is already heading towards the top of the pack in this uh, league table. Since 2017, we've had further increases, so it's kind of moving further up uh, the league table here. Okay? And for those who are eagle-eyed, this is a very slightly different measure to the one that I was showing before. So if I was to draw a line on this graph as where the, the kind of two-thirds of median uh, 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 minimum wage would sit, well, on this measure, it would sit about this kind of uh, bluish line here or very slightly above the level for France. Okay, so that means that we're talking, if the government were to go uh, to two-thirds of mean, you'd be talking about a level that is at or even above that seen in industrialised nations so far, and therefore actually learning from, from other countries is quite difficult when you've only got a couple or you're even going beyond uh, what's happened in other places. So in conclusion, if the government does want to have a minimum wage at about two-thirds of median uh, earnings, we don't know what the effects of that would be. So while useful and, 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 and a good way to, to start, a review of the international evidence is unlikely to come down definitively on saying what the effects would be of such a minimum wage because you'd be moving into uncharted territory internationally. 
I think given this, the important thing to say is the government would need some kind of process, if you were to go along these uh, lines, to monitor impacts as the minimum wage rises. That would necessitate some form of gradual increase because if it was to move very fast, it would be very difficult to monitor and see what was happening before you'd already moved on. And the ability to adjust policy necessary. And that would be, you know, against what, opposite to what the Conservative government did when it introduced the national living wage, where it said in 2015 that by 2020 we will reach 60% of median earnings and set a target by that point. That doesn't involve the kind of flexibility that allows you to respond to the evidence of what, what is going on. So that's all from me, and I'm now going to pass on to Paul for the last presentation. Thank you.